Hello, welcome back to Cracking a Cryptic and uh, a fascinatingly empty grid puzzle today. Just a few black dots scattered around. <laughs> We've got to find a black member in the grid. Um, <coughs> lithium iron is a great constructor, so I'm looking forward to this, but I think it might be a bit of a puzzle. Um, it's a snake puzzle and they can be quite tough. We'll look at this in a minute, but don't forget that on the channel, there are so many things you can do to interact with the channel and we love it if you were to buy our merchandise or spend Sudoku pad or partake in our apps which are marvellous and contain all kinds of um, brilliant puzzles including Domino Sudoku which features quite a lot of black dots in it. There isn't a snake app as such yet although I think there are apps in which snakes can be drawn. But if you want puzzles of that sort, do check out um, our various monthly rewards, one of which was the Snake Egg Collection, of course, but the July's monthly reward is also very approachable, a 6x6 Sudoku butt by Paws, who's new and brilliant, and um, has the hunt has proved very popular. Do check it out. Uh, also on Patreon, you can watch Simon Solving Blobs is Lord of the Rings, if you're a $3 a month Patreon. It's not much to ask. <coughs> but do try those apps as well. Anyway, the first link under this puzzle is to Black Mamba by Lithium Ion, who's obviously a battery constructor. But uh, let's do the rules and see how we go. Normal Sudoku rules apply, so we will be trying to put one to nine in every row, column, and three by three box. Now, we have to draw a one cell wide snake which starts in box five, that's this box, and ends in box nine that moves orthogonally through the centers of cells. The snake is not allowed to branch or intersect with itself or touch itself, even diagonally. Cells that are orthogonally adjacent along the snake, it moves orthogonally, so that's only horizontally or vertically, no diagonal moves. Cells that are orthogonally adjacent along the snake have to contain consecutive digits. One, two, three, two, one, for instance. Within each box, the box number, and this is box one, that's box two, that's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The box number has to be part of the snake. Cells separated by a black dot contain digits in a one to two ratio, so one is half the other. All possible black dots are given, so there are no, you can't have one and two there or three and six because there'd be a black dot. That's almost certainly going to be important and a negative constraint that probably comes late enough in the puzzle that I'll be able to forget that it applies. We shall see how that goes. <sighs> I do know my own weaknesses sometimes, but they come later. So when I get completely stuck, and when, I, when you hear the words, oh, I don't seem to know what to do at all now, tell me about the negative constraint and I'll see if it helps. Right, I'm going to try the puzzle now. Let's get cracking. Wow, this, we don't get a lot of information there, do we? We don't even have any runs of three black two black dots in a row where the middle cell is forced to be two or four because the problem is that all of these runs of three black dots go through two different boxes and therefore these could be the same digit, these could be the same digit, these could be the same. So they're not very useful in a way. So we're going to have to think about the snake and these rules. The snake runs along consecutive digits. It starts somewhere in box five. Let's give that a yellow starting color. And it ends in box nine with a red finishing color. Now, the rules didn't exactly specify that the snake goes through each box one at a time. But they did say that it, it Within each box, the box number is part of the snake. So the snake does go through every box. We just don't know that it only goes into each box once. What I'm getting at is that you could theoretically have a snake that looked like this. 
and it would have made two entries into box six, for instance, and box five. And that might matter in terms of drawing its path. Because what I'd like to be able to say is either, if, if it doesn't do that, the reason I care about that is because if it doesn't do that, if it goes once in, in, into each box, then its path is either taking these boxes in that order or taking these boxes in that order. Okay, I think this rule about the box number having to be on the snake. Yeah, this does matter a lot, right. That means there is a nine and a one on the path. Now, nine is the finishing box. So it could easily run into this box six, seven, eight, nine. There's no real problem with that. The, the box one is the problem. Because one is on the snake in this box, but the only digit one can be consecutive with on the snake, which must come in and out of this box, is a two. And that, to me, means, well, the one is definitely in one of these cells, because in one, it can only be next to two within box one once. And the other two must be in a different box. It's either in box two, with a join like that, or it's in box four with a join like that. Now, it's not in box two, because a one and a two together would have a black dot. So the one and the two that connect out of box one are through one of these two cells. One of those is a one, and one of these is a two. And more than that, I think it has to be here, because wherever the one then goes after having come from box four into box one, it must hit a two again, and you need another black dot. And the only other black dot, apart from the joining one, is here. So I think we've got our one there and our two twos here, and I, that must be part of the snake. So I'm going to make those digits purple. I'll have a purple snake and green where the snake can't go, which includes that cell now. Oh my goodness, I've got absolutely mad colours somehow. Sorry, I'm just going to change my shades of green. And I've got a weird brown colour. I don't know how I did that. So we'll OK that. That used to be black or something. I don't know. Let's make it... Oh, that's just as ugly. Why can't I find... Oh, I'm... it's going up there. Right. Oh, I see. I just don't know how these colour systems work at all. Sorry. Anyway. I don't know, we, I'm not going to use it. Let's get rid of that. That is green. There's no snake there. So the snake carries on here. It mustn't touch itself. It can't turn there. Now, the snake could go here, but it can never go here. Therefore, it can never get into the top corner. And this is going to have to be a three because it's consecutive to two and it's not one. Then one of these is going to have to be a four. And the next digit after that on the snake is going to have to be a 5, because that 3 sees all the possible next cells. That 5 can't be here, because then you'd have 4, 5 on a black dot. So the 5's in one of those two cells. And we will hit the 4 in box 4 here. Now this 2 is going to reach a 3 in one of those cells. This black dot doesn't have a 2 on it. So it's either 3-6, which seems very plausible, or it's 4-8. I was just about to say, this can't be 3, because then you'd have to hit 4 in one of these cells. And if this is 4-8, that's impossible. But I suppose it could go 3-4-5, and you could have 8-4 here. That's weird. That's annoying. Um... I still don't know what the path of the snake is at all. It begins here and it ends here, and it takes in this bit. It's, it's going to hit 
a four in box four. It's already hit a one in box one. It's going to have to hit a two in box two somewhere there. That's interesting. It's going to have to hit a three in box three as well. And a nine in box nine. That, in some ways, that was the most interesting thing, but I don't quite know how to get at that because the nine is almost certainly going to be the finishing cell. Not absolutely certainly, but very nearly certainly. Oh, this pair has to be a 4-8 pair. Ah, that's just black dot logic, because we've used that 1, 2, 3 in the column, so you can't put 6 here. So that's not a 4 now. This is definitely a 4. That has to be an 8 on the black dot, and the path has to come here to a 5. OK, good. So this goes green, so we don't touch. That's green. This is green, otherwise we'd be touching the snake. And this is now not a 4-8 pair, and it doesn't have a 2 in it. It is a 3-6 pair. We know the order by Sudoku. We get a 3 in the central box, and that 3 is on the path from this 2. So that's snake, and these 2 now definitely aren't, I think. But this is now going to hit a 4, either there or there, because 2 sees both those cells. We can't go back down to 2. This is going to hit a 6, and it can't do it there by Sudoku, so it's got to be here. Neither of these can be a 4 by Sudoku, so we've instantly climbed from 1 up to 6 here. Now, however, we could hit 5, but then we'd get stuck here. Although we could hit 4 there, we couldn't go on to 3 without touching ourselves. In fact, there is a 3 in one of those cells by Sudoku, but... We're not allowed to have that snake path. So this isn't a 5. Well, it, it could be a 5, but it's not on the snake. This could be 5 on the snake, or any of these could be 7. Not any of them. I don't think this, the snake can go here. Because if this was a 7, yes, it could hit 8, but then it can't reach another useful cell after that, 7 or 9. So that's not on the snake. That's green. And one of these, either one of them's a 7 or that's a 5. But we're going to have to hit 8 in this box somewhere. Let's just do a bit of Sudoku marking. 179. This one's gone green as well because the snake has passed, gone by it. <coughs> now, these are green because we can't come into that area of the grid and get out again. Ah, it's an interesting puzzle. I like this. I mean, the black mamba, I think, because we have black dots and a snake, and black mamba is the name of a snake. Now, I'm, I want to get rid of the yellow and red. Actually, what I'm going to do is get rid of it around there, just leaving the those colours in because this is the start box and this is the finish box as a sort of reminder to me, but I don't want to obscure that the snake could come in here. In fact, that could... No, that can't be the starting point, I don't think. Well, I don't know. Anyway, two, four, five, six. We need an eight in one of those cells. That's just Sudoku. Six is in one of those. I mean, this is not interesting. I, I need to think about the snake a bit more which has to hit a 2 in this box somewhere, which is the next box it's going into, although it could go into it twice. Now, what's this black dot? It doesn't have a 2 or a 3, 6. That's a 4, 8 pair. And, yes, I did forget the rule, didn't I, about the negative constraint on black dots. All black dots are given. What? Yeah, that stops this being a 1, obviously, touching a 2. So that's a 1. Now this is a 3-1 pair, and with this can't be a 3 because there's no black dot, of course. Right, I'm glad I've remembered the rule. Now, this snake doesn't go here. It goes here into a 7 or 5. And... This can't be 4, 6, or 8, so it doesn't go here. 
it must go here, which is either 4 or 8, because it can't be 6 again. Now, if that's 8, that would fulfill... Oh, well, yeah, we have to hit a 7 in box 7, so that's a 7. Now that's an 8 by Sudoku, and now we've fulfilled the requirements of hitting 1, 4, 7, and 8 in their relevant boxes. These have gone green. Uh, that's not a 7, and these are from 259. Now, there is a 4 in one of those cells, but the 4 I've got pencil marked between those two is the continuation of the snake. Now, it's all very well saying that this 8 might go on to a 9. But then it would have to hit another 8. It can't go on to a 9 here. Because neither of those could be 8. The snake would end. It could go on to either a 7 or a 9 here, as long as that was the next cell. I'm tempted to think about these black dots now as well. This can't be a 1-2 pair. These can't be 6 or 8, so they're from 1, 2, 3, 4, the only other black dot digits that exist. This can't be 1. I don't know, this isn't maybe all that helpful, surprisingly. Um... There is a 4 in one of these cells. Not necessarily the four where the snake continues. Have I forgotten the negative constraint again? I probably have. I don't think that sorts out the four eight pair. One, two, three, four, eight, five, six, seven, nine. These are from seven, eight, nine. There's no negative constraint issues there. Ah, this can't be a 5-9 pair. Oh, because of that. I was going to say because that can't be a 2-4 pair. All I know is there is a 2 here. So these cells are from 4-5-9. One of them is a 4 and won't be next to 8 here. That's all I get from that. Oh, bother. I can't carry on this R. This could be the start of the snake, this three in box five. No, it can't. Because then it would go this way, and then it would never get out of box eight to finish in box nine, unless it did something crazy like that. Hmm, I don't know. This can't be, there are quite a few things it can't be because of the black dot rule. It can't be two because of that or four because of that. So this is six, seven or nine. I mean, it makes it a big strong candidate for where the snake continues. Almost stops this being a six, three pair. It would have to be six there and three there then this would have to be 2-8 to avoid having a 4. That's quite complicated. But I can't quite rule out that this is a 6-3 pair. If I could, then I would know it would have a 4 on it. Maybe I could rule that out. Oh, there must be some easy, easier way of continuing this snake. Not necessarily an easy way, but some way of seeing how the snake continues. It's a four in one of those positions. And then it could be that three, but otherwise it would be a five in one of these positions where you can't put a three. Okay, after the eight here, we could go seven, can we go to a nine here? 
then it would be 8 here, and that could be the starting point. That would fix that as a 4, and this is an 8. I don't know. Bit stuck here. Now, I know I was meant to remember the negative constraint when I got a bit stuck, but I don't think I've really forgotten that properly. Only for a very brief time so far. So, this pair. Let's think about that again. If this was a 4-8 pair. We would have a complete 4-8 deadly pattern. Which would make this either one, two, I don't know. Now I'm going to have to think of some other box where we have to go through. We need to hit a 5 in this box in one of those cells. And we need to hit a 6 in this box in one of these cells because of that 6. And the six we hit in this box is neither the beginning nor end of the snake. Hmm, interesting. I don't think either of... This can't be part of the snake path, these two cells. Because you couldn't put a five or a seven in either of them because of the black dots. Maybe I just need to think about where the five is. And the five has to be on the snake. This can't be the end. Right. The five is on the snake here. In one of these cells. So for that to be a three that was on the path, the five would have to be here. Yeah, this is a sort of checkerboard thing. On this snake, all the even cells that can be on the snake are in this sort of checkerboard position because you must move one right or left for each odd move and then one north or south or right or left for each even move. I mean, I hope you follow what I'm saying there, but five cannot be in any of those positions on the snake. Five is on the snake. It's got to be here in the middle. That is where it is, yes. The only place five can be on the snake because of its parity in this box is in the middle. So then we get out to either a six in one of those positions or a four in one of those. Well, it can't be a four here because then you would have to join on to this bit of the snake and you'd only have one digit to join four to eight. And that's impossible in terms of consecutiveness. It can't be a 4 here because of that 4-8 pair, and it can't be a 4 here because of that. So this 5 joins to a 6. It's not here by Sudoku. It's not there by the black dot rule from that 3. So the 6 it joins to is in one of those positions, and not here. Now, if that's a 6, Much more interestingly, if that's the 6 that this joins to, then it's got to hit a 7 here, because these digits can't be 7s or 5s. Wow. And then it could sort of go up this way. And if it goes to here, it's got to hit a 7 that can't go there. It's got to join onto this 8 in much the same way. It either hits a 7 there, or a seven here. The snake either goes that way or that way. Well, let's definitely take five as its center, as its starting point. I think that is almost certain now. And it either goes through here, five, six, seven, eight. This is quite plausible. Or it goes through here. Now, this is less plausible, but it is possible. Five, six, seven there. Then it would have to hit... It could... It can't hit a six here, so it would have to hit an eight next, which couldn't be there by Sudoku. It couldn't hit a six there, because that would put a three here and a clash. So it would have to go five, six, seven... 
or that eight could be up or down if it went that way. I'd much rather prove that it goes this way, which seems almost certain to me. This is one seven or nine by Sudoku, given that four eight pair. So there's a five in one of these cells. Not very interesting. Uh, is it? I don't think it is. This is one, two, seven or nine. That's also not very interesting. Can I use this checkerboard discovery anywhere? Two is going to have to be on one of those places when it gets caught in box two because of the checkerboard rule and where even cells can be in terms of the diagonal orientation. Oh, that can't be a two because it's next to a one. It's that old rule again that, that I did remember. I just didn't apply it. I don't think that's going to get anything done, but it's quite interesting still. Mind you, where's four in this column? It's not there or there because of the checkerboard, the, the, the black dot rule, or there. So four is in one of these three cells in this box. And we know four's in one of those two, so I'm changing what my fours are achieving here. Now, this is box two, though. And we're going to meet a two in one of those cells on the snake. Why do I think it's there? Because of the black dot, probably. No, actually, I don't think it can. It can't be there. Because when we hit the two on the snake, we're coming from a four in one of those positions. Ah, then we can't, after we've hit four in one of these positions, we cannot now hit three next. Because none of these can be a three. So we're gonna have to hit five next in one of these two positions. So the snake goes to four in one of those, I'm going to mark that. Four in one of those, five in one of these. And then, well, could it go back to another four? And the interesting thing is, it's going to have to hit two in one of these. So if you went to a six here, four, five, six, how are you ever going to get back to a two here? only by the snake touching itself. So um, by there, I just mean at the furthest point. What, what I'm kind of saying is if we went from a four to a five in one of those to a six next, which would have to be in one of those cells, then you're never gonna climb down the digits enough to hit a two in this box in one of those. So it doesn't go four, five, six. It goes four, five, four, this snake. Four in one of those, five in one of those, and then another four. And that second four is in box two. So the first four was in box one and is there. Now we hit five here, and then we hit four, which can't be here and must be here. So five in one of those dark green cells. Then we hit this four. That's also purple, just as this one was. And then we go three, which can't be here and must be here. And then one of these is the two that is going to count as box two's two. Now, box three is three, which has to be hit, is in that cell by the checkerboard rule. It has to be on those checkerboard cells. So box three's three is there, and that's on the snake. And we're hitting a two in one of these places. Then since neither of, none of these can be a two, we're hitting a one next in one of those two. And then we're hitting another two to get to this three in one of those two. So we've got a two in one of those two and a two in one of those two. Well, it can't be those two twos, which would be a possible pair because they can't be reached by a one in between. So those two are the twos. This can't be a one on the black dot rule, the negative black dot rule, so that's the one, and there's our snake. 
It's cunning, this, isn't it? I still don't know which of these is the five on the snake. I don't like that colour. I really should get that changed. Let's make them grey. Uh, we've got to a three there. Now we have to hit a four next because we can't hit another two. And that can't be here. So the four's here. That must be an eight by Sudoku and not on the snake. Now we need to hit a five, which is going to be here. Wow, and this snake is just coming together completely now. That's green as well. So is that. So is this and that. Right, now we are making progress. Very interesting snake puzzle. Now, can we hit a four next? Yes, we could. In I, well, in that position only. This can't be a four because of the four eight pair. And we can't hit a six in either of those. So we either hit six here or four here, which is a bit weird. Uh, that's terrible pencil marking. Don't do that. Just total confusion pencil marking. That is one, seven, or nine. Okay, let me try and do some Sudoku now. So eight is in one of those cells and therefore not here. So that's an eight. That's not a four by any manner of means anymore. And that's not a four either. Basically, one of these is a five and we don't know which one. We can't use uniqueness to say one of them's a five and they mustn't both be fives because we don't know necessarily that the snake will have a unique path, I don't think. Now, maybe the holistic snake path will tell us something. We're going this way. And we started in box five, we're going to finish in box nine. I literally still don't know which one we go through. So could this be six? No, five, six. That would have to carry on through a seven there. And then it would have to join up with that through one of those. And it would have to be a six and that would repeat a six. So the six isn't here. Five goes here to the six. Then one of these two is a seven by Sudoku, it has to be there, and that is the beginning of the snake. And we can colour in a lot of green. And that's not a seven now. So that's the beginning. So the snake is now going to end from box six into box nine. And we have to climb from a five to a nine, which doesn't feel like we can come through these cells. It feels like we have to come through here. This digit by Sudoku is 2, 8 or 9. By black dot, it's not 9. So that's 2 or 8. And this is now 4 or 1 on the black dot. How are we going to get from this box into this box at all? It looks quite tricky, funnily enough. No, the, neither of these can be a four now because of that two or eight. I suppose that maybe that doesn't matter at all. Ah, this is not on the snake. It would have to be a four and then you'd have to carry on into a three here, but that's blocked. So that's not on the snake. This is not on the snake. This is on the snake and is a six. Then we're gonna have to come to a seven in one of those two cells. Then we're going to have to come to an 8. Now we can't turn back on ourselves, we can't go there. So the 8 is in one of these two cells and that now is a 2 and not on the snake. The 8 is in one of these two cells and then we're going to have to reach a 9 and we can't do it if we came 7, 8 here. So this is the path. 7, 8. Surely the 9 is going to have to be here, it is. And that may actually conclude the snake. We may have, well, apart from the five in one of these cells, which we will resolve in due course. But I think we can be confident about greening all of those and all of these. Now, I'm just going to hope that the rest can be done by Sudoku at this point. One, two, that has become a four. That's an eight. Eight, five, seven, six, three. We need a four in the central box. That's there. This has become a nine, actually, ages ago. 
Five, yeah, look, Sudoku is going to do a lot of this. There's a five. I hope to prove that that's not a five, so I can say for sure that that five's on the snake. Because it's, it's always much more satisfying if you can actually prove the path. That's one or nine. That's a three. Three, one, nine, eight. This can't be three or one by Sudoku anymore. It can't be two, actually, because of the black dot. There would be a black dot between whatever that is and a two here. So that's a four. This is two. That becomes a one by elimination. We've got five, six, and seven to place in the final column. Top can't be five. We've got a nine to place in box three. That's a six, seven pair. So that's nine in box one. Now, one, two, three, four, eight. This is five or six by Sudoku. Let's look at this middle box. Oh no, one nine pair there, that's a seven. Oh, that was very obvious. One of these is a two, it's gotta be here because it can't be here, so this is one or nine. That five snake cannot continue any further, so I can block these off as green. I don't know what I just did there. Right, block these off as green is what I was trying to do. Um, this is an 8-7 pair, so that's not a 7. This is from, these are from, that is 5 or 6, it can't be 3, so 3 is here. And that is not on the snake path. Uh, five, six. This is a two, three pair. They're resolved from the top row. And the snake is finished. It can't get away from that nine, so we can color all that green. Okay, good. Now, four, three, two, seven, eight. This is five or six. One, two, three, four, eight. This is seven or nine. This must resolve more easily than I'm finding. I'm sure there's an easy way. Oh, eight in the central column is here. Nine, four, eight, two, three. We need a one, five, six, two. That's four or seven. So that's part of a four, seven, eight triple. This is five or six, part of a five, six pair. These are from one, four, seven, nine. Oh, of course, the, the, the negative constraint rule. So two must be next to seven there. It can't be next to four. Oh, that's huge, and I forgot it again. Wow, Predict, predicting I was going to forget it is not as good as remembering it, but there we go. Four there. This is part of a one-nine pair. That four sorts out eight-four. That sorts out eight-seven. Six can't be next to three in either of those places, so they're both fives. Those are both sixes. That fixes box three in its entirety, which completes box one. This is a one six pair, which is good news because I now know the snake path must go through here. And the snake is complete and the puzzle is very nearly complete. Five and seven there, one and nine down here. And there we go, that is the black mamba uh, I didn't get a tick because I haven't finished off the last two cells. Found and identified, I get the tick now. Not many people have solved that, so it's probably just been sent to us. I hope you've had a go at it because that is a brilliant puzzle that deserves some publicity and not to, be, not to have people afraid of this black member. Maybe I should actually make it black now. There we go, there is the black member in the creeping through the jungle. And look at its path, five from the box, six, seven, eight for box eight, seven for box seven, six, five, four for box four, three, two, one for box one, quite a long string until two for box two, three for box three, six for box six, and finally nine in box nine. Brilliant stuff from lithium iron, really entertaining. Um, honestly, I love puzzles like that. So thank you for joining with me in tracking down the Black Mamba, and I hope to see you again soon on the channel for more Sudoku fun. Bye for now.